Obiam Atuguba retired. He's a former justice of the Supreme Court of the Republic of Ghana. I thank you so much for joining us, sir. Good evening to you. Uh, thank you. Uh, to, to me, this says I don't like them. Just uh, brothers, just talk. Say, sir, sir, sir. I think I used to them, but to me, they are not. <laughs> I don't enjoy them. <laughs> I mean, important thing is a human being. What, uh, what you can do to help society? That's it. It's not titles and these sort of. We're all human beings. Uh, 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 My relations, that's uh, uh, important. Okay. Uh, indeed. Well, you've earned it. But um, I thank you uh, very much for staying up to join us here on Ghana Tonight. And you, you saw my colleague run through what the latest is with this matter. You have followed this case right from last week, Tuesday, when the speaker was petitioned. And then after the 48 hours reflection, he gave a reasoned ruling on Thursday. The NPP caucus led by the leader went to the Supreme Court uh, to seek to have the speaker's decision, as was communicated last week Thursday in declaring these four seats vacant set aside. I mean, having followed all of this, what's your own view about how events have played out in this case? Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> the speaker did not. Uh, he referred to the fact that um, he had been served with a uh, 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 court order uh, from the Supreme Court. Uh, it was one of the factors that uh, he took into account in uh, adjourning matters indefinitely. Sunday. Uh, uh, so the, the effect of it uh, is that uh, uh, there's, I mean, Parliament is not, uh, in session is not um, operating for some time. I mean, until it reconvenes uh, for active work. That's what <laughs> it means. I see. And as we saw today, indeed, uh, he adjourning Parliament indefinitely. Some right from Tuesday and, and what happened on Friday, some have over the right from Friday to this moment questioned the Supreme Court's jurisdiction in getting into this matter and the form and nature of this. You know the, the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. Will that concern be one that you would share, that the Supreme Court's jurisdiction was invoked wrongly in this case? Well, um, uh, as far as I'm concerned, this uh, vacation of seat matter is specifically dealt with in Article 99. Uh, was, I think you know that, isn't it? 90, Nine, no, 99. it deals with vacation of office, uh, among other things. Yes. But 99 yeah. uh, is as follows. That's what the article says. The High Court shall have jurisdiction to hear and determine any question whether a person has been validly elected as a member of parliament or the seat of a member has become vacant or a person has been validly elected as a speaker of parliament or having been so elected has vacated the office of speaker. A person aggrieved by the determination of the High Court under this article may appeal to the Court of Appeal. Well, that's another interesting dimension. Uh, so, the question involved here is one related to vacation of uh, the the seats of the four MPs involved. Uh, so it's a matter for the High Court, uh, not for the Supreme Court. Yeah, so to that extent, uh, invoking the Supreme Court over this matter is wrong. You don't 
don't, they don't have original jurisdiction. You see, original jurisdiction means invoking the cause jury at first instance. That's original. But they have referred jurisdiction in the sense that uh, from even this matter, why if a constitutional probation comes up, which is uh, not plain and straightforward, requiring interpretation, at 130, which gives the interpret in interpretive uh, interpretative power and the enforcement power to the exclusive to the Supreme Court, uh, says that if a question relating to those issues arises in the court lower than the Supreme Court, the lower court shall stay the proceedings and refer the matter to the Supreme Court for determination and then shall dispose of the matter before them in accordance with the interpretation. So, um, once Article 99 has entrusted vacation of this matter to the High Court, uh, the Supreme Court to say you don't just go straight at first instance to invoke it in a matter like this, but it has referred uh, jurisdiction if an issue of interpretation related to the Constitution arises. So, to me, uh, uh, that's how I see it. I uh, see, and the, the speaker in reading his decision on Thursday was quite clear in, in indicating that he was not seeking to interpret 97.1 G and H, but was applying that particular article and the details of it um, if violated. And as you have just, just made reference to the fact that the, the details of 97 is clear and is applicable automatically. But what we're dealing with right now, the Supreme Court has been asked to, as it were, come in because Alexander Fenyomaki makes the argument that the, the Speaker sought to interpret the Constitution. And so the Supreme Court then takes a decision that the execution of the Speaker's decision as communicated to declare these seats vacant should be stayed. It should not be executed. Th that's what's happening right now. Yeah, but in relation to what did he, I mean, assuming he interpreted, um, in relation to what did he interpret, a vacancy in Parliament, vacancy in Parliament matter is given to the High Court under Article 99, as I read to you, not to the Supreme Court. As I'm saying that, you see, Article 130 gives original jurisdiction of interpretation and effort, original. But where it has given jurisdiction relation to another particular matter, to a particular court, that court doesn't lose its jurisdiction. What happens is if an interpretation issue arises, at the 130 clause 2 itself says the lower court shall stay the proceedings and refer the question of interpretation to the Supreme Court for determination. And then they will determine the case in accordance with that interpretation. So in such a situation, the Supreme Court has referral jurisdiction, not original jurisdiction. Referral jurisdiction cannot be the same as original jurisdiction. And uh, uh, and uh, just William, I'm about uh, if 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 you could put the, the 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 camera back on, I think we lost you briefly. But then again, the, there's been that reaction to if you can hear me now, the decision by the Supreme Court as communicated uh, on Friday to have the speaker's the decision, the execution of the speaker's decision stayed, and from your legal lenses. Is this one that the Supreme Court can do?
as it were, because that's one of the issues that has come up for discussion now, whether the Supreme Court indeed did right in having or indicating that the Speaker's decision should be stayed. From where you sit, is that right? Well, I said on some other platform that <clears throat> uh, strictly in law, I mean, I don't see how they could have other stay of execution. Uh, stay of execution relates to execution uh, of um, court judgments using court processes for enforcing court judgments. That's what execution uh, in relation to court judgment means. Uh, so we don't apply this to some non-court situation. Uh, it's just not applicable. Nonetheless, um, over the years, the courts have uh, tried to do substantial justice. Uh, it's not like uh, the olden common law days when uh, uh, you had to uh, strictly frame <laughs> your action or relief. Otherwise, uh, it would be perditious. I uh, try to do substantial justice. So if somebody comes for a stay of execution and you see that, oh, I mean, it's just nomenclature, but uh, if you had asked for injunction or uh, some other uh, uh, suitable order, we, could, uh, we shouldn't uh, throw the person out because of that technical choice. Uh, so, you look at the substance of the thing. Uh, even they call it a stay of execution, but all the intent is suspend or, I mean, suspend the, uh, the force of your ruling, the effect of it. Uh, uh, that is the substance. An injunction can achieve that. Uh, so, uh, I think that uh, the emotive, uh, you know, clinging to epithets uh, is neither here nor there. That's not very helpful at all. Yeah. So then, in substance, I think that's what the court did. Uh, I see. And, and, and before I let you go, and, and uh, no, we, we're going to have an extensive conversation on this matter subsequently. But I just want to find out from you, uh, there are many, because of this particular instance and a few others in the past, that have expressed concern about the workings of the Supreme Court currently. Now, having served at the Apex Court for this long, uh, do these concerns raised have merit? And as you have heard, do they raise any eyebrows for you or these concerns being expressed about the workings of the Supreme Court is much ado about nothing? Uh, if it raises eyebrows, yes, my eyebrows too will be raised. <laughs> you know, uh, as a, uh, a common uh, a matter of uh, human uh, inclination. Uh, but that's not a matter of law for me. Uh, I uh, cannot know uh, whether they've done so only in respect of this one or in respect of some other matters. Uh, all I can say is that uh, um, uh, courts do exp expedite uh, cases we they think uh, of um, uh, very pressing importance. Uh, so these things can happen. However, if, you know, in the terrain of uh, constitutional adjudication, uh, parity of treatment is not given, uh, in, in, uh, parity of uh, circumstances, then you can, can, can complain. But I am not seized with uh, uh, the whole gamut of uh, constitutional cases before the Supreme Court and how they have <laughs> uh, handled them. So it's difficult to, uh, to say whether this one was uh, uh, exceptionally expedited uh, when others 
That's matters of fact, a matter of fact. Maybe you, the journalist, can know if you, you know, go to the Supreme Court and find out the number of actions that have come before them recently and uh, uh, in terms of uh, the oppressing the character and how they've treated them. I say to you in my house here. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and rightly so. And I want to thank you.